upgrades are here. And that includes one of my favorite pieces of software, Microsoft OneNote. Microsoft is recommending that we transition from the OneNote 2016 program to the OneNote for Windows 10 app. I'm a big fan of the previous version, but I'm also a big fan of the new version. You get a pretty seamless experience between PC, tablet, or mobile. The search features are still awesome. And just like the previous version, it allows you to collect, manage, and share text, documents, and even audio and video files. Oh, and it's free. So in this video, I'm going to show you a few tips that hopefully will help you to transition to the new OneNote for Windows 10. And if you're new to the program, then I hope I'm showing you some tips that'll really interest you in a program that ups your productivity, regardless of how you organize things. At the end of this video, I'll also come back and talk a little bit about sharing your OneNote notebook. But in the meantime, give me a few minutes and I'll show you a few tips for working with OneNote for Windows 10. Let's start with a quick way of identifying exactly what's on every page of your OneNote notebook. If you have a lot of sections or have a lot of pages, often it can all seem to run together. But by engaging page previews, you can now get a small graphic of exactly what's in each page. To activate previews, you can just move to any notebook, section, or page and right click. When you do, choose navigation panes at the bottom of the list. And when you choose navigation panes, you'll see a small checkbox at the bottom of this list. And once you select that checkbox, previews are now available for each page of your OneNote notebook. This includes any files or printouts, text, or even graphics. Next is what can be one of the most important items in OneNote, and that's the ability to recover deleted items. So let's say you've deleted a page, maybe by accident or on purpose, and you need to recover that page. Well, you can do that by moving up to the View tab and then over to Deleted Notes. When you hold your mouse over Deleted Notes, you'll, you can either select the button or you can select the small combo or drop down button to the right, and you have multiple options. You could, of course, disable the history for this notebook so deleted items will no longer be stored, or you can view Deleted Notes or even empty deleted notes. If I choose view deleted notes, it then presents me with a pane on the left that shows me all of the notes that I have deleted in this notebook. To restore a deleted page, I can just move to the page and right click the page in the deleted items. And I have the option then to delete the page permanently, or I can choose Restore To, and a list of the available sections for my notebook will be presented. And then I can just choose the section that this page belongs to, in this case Inventory, and then choose Restore. When I do, the page is now restored. I can close Deleted Notes by clicking the small X here at the top. And now my page is back in the list in my inventory section. Now I may need to reposition this page and I can do that just by grabbing the page and click hold and drag the page to its position.
One of my longtime favorite features in Microsoft OneNote is the ability to absorb details from meetings that you might have scheduled directly into your OneNote notebook. And you can do that by moving to the Insert tab and then over to Meeting Details. When you select Meeting Details, a pane will open on the right side of the screen and will show any meetings that you have scheduled for the day. If you have scheduled a meeting and for the day and you don't see it on this, you can always move to the bottom and click Refresh. If the meeting is on another day, then you can just move to Today's Meetings and when you click it, it will show a calendar and you can just navigate to the day of the meeting. When you do, any meetings that you have scheduled show up in that pane on the right and you can bring them into your OneNote notebook just by clicking the meeting. When you do, the information is now in your OneNote notebook and you can view or even expand on some of the information. For example, in the invitation message, I have some information that I'd like to see and I can just move up to the expand command here and when I click it, it will show any notes that I have made inside the meeting for my participants as well as it looks like a list of inventory items that we'll need to review. And if you'd like to collect the participants for the meeting, you can also move down to the second expand button here and it will show any participants that are in that meeting. Quick Notes allow you to quickly place information into your OneNote notebook without actually having to open the program. So, for example, if I'm working in Excel and I need to create a note for uh, my OneNote notebook, I can do that by just holding the Windows key and then tapping the letter N. When I do this, the Quick Note opens in the top left corner and I can type in any information that I need to store into my notebook. So let's take a look at these numbers at our next meeting. When I close the note, this information is now stored into OneNote and then I can access it later by just moving to the program. The one drawback after you've created the quick note, you often have to go find it in a sea of other notebooks and sections and pages. You can control the default location for your quick notes by moving to the options. So we'll move to the top right corner, to options and settings, choose settings, and then options. And we'll scroll down to about halfway through this pane to Quick Notes and choose a notebook for your Quick Notes. When I select that command, I'm then given the option of placing any future Quick Notes into either my own personal notebook or I can place it into my test notebook. And when I click OK, that will be the location for all new Quick Notes. Because OneNote is so copy and paste friendly, you may find yourself entering information that way quite a bit. And when you do, for example, I'll copy this information from a PowerPoint presentation. I can move to OneNote, right click and choose paste. But if I move to the small arrow on the right side, I now have options for pasting that content. I can keep the source formatting I can merge it with existing formatting, I can keep the text only, or paste it as a picture. In this case, I'll keep the source formatting, and when I do, I get exactly the same font and colors that existed in my PowerPoint presentation. Now, with that range of options, you may find yourself using one more than others, and you can set this as a default in the options of the OneNote program. 
To get to that option, I'll move up here to the right side of the screen and at the top and choose settings. And then options. When the options are activated, I can now scroll down to the very bottom of the screen and choose paste options. In the paste options, I can click the small drop down here and choose one. In this case, I'll choose keep source formatting, close the options. And now when I right click and choose paste, I keep the formatting for all of the objects that I paste into my OneNote notebook. And the immersive reader actually reads your notes to you on screen. And to activate the reader, I can just move to the View tab and then over to Immersive Reader. When I activate the reader, the reader becomes full screen and I can control the reader with any of the preferences in the top right corner of the screen. I can adjust text options by selecting the double A's and then I can control text size. I can increase the spacing or change fonts or colors. Under grammar options, I can highlight different areas of the note for example, if I want to identify all of the nouns in my note, I can select nouns and all the nouns are now highlighted in red. I can do the same thing with verbs, adjectives, or adverbs. And if I choose show labels at the bottom, each of the words is identified with one letter. The reading options on the right allow me to focus the reader as it's reading the text. To adjust the reader, I can move to the bottom to voice settings. And when I choose that, I can tell the reader to read a little slower or faster. And I can also choose the voice uh, as female or male. And when I click the small play button here on the bottom, in a column immediately next to your data, retype the information in the format that you would like to see. The immersive reader reads my text. To escape from the reader, I can either select the arrow at the top left, or I can hold the escape key down and return to my note. Just like the 2016 version, it's got toys. Now, I mentioned I'd come back and talk a little bit about sharing your OneNote notebook with others. So here we go. You can share your OneNote notebook by using Microsoft's OneDrive cloud storage, also free. It's really easy to share your OneNote notebook using OneDrive. You just move up to the top right corner and click Share. When you do, another pane will open on the right and you can just type in the email address of the person that you're sharing the notebook with. It'll open for them in a web app. You can even allow them to edit the notebook or they can just view it as read only. Now, of course, while you're doing all this sharing, you might need to restrict access to some of the notebook's section. To protect a section, you just navigate to the section and right click on the section tab and choose password protection. You'll need to add a password and when you do the password is added to the section and then to gain access to the section you'll just need to navigate there and type in the password. To change or remove the password, you can just once again move to the section tab, right click, choose password protection, and then you have the option to change the password, remove the password, 
you can lock a section and sections lock automatically after being away from them for a few minutes or you could lock all protected sections in the notebook. I hope this helps you to get started in OneNote for Windows 10. And if this and some of my other tips are working for you, hey, subscribe. And if you're already subscribing, thanks. So until our next video, good luck with your OneNote notebooks. Thanks for joining me and I'm Wayne.